Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, February 6, 2022. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Entertainment Length, episode number uh, 635. And guess what, folks? Uh, we had a hilarity this morning, or uh, before the show, but we are now going into this. Let's talk about sex. Gary, what specifically we're we talking about? Because I don't think, you know what? It's been such a long time since we've done a let's talk about sex. It's just, uh, I'm just craving it so much. I feel are you, starved are you, from it. Are you, are you, are you in Antissa? Say it. Hasten. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I was not expecting that. As, as, as <laughs> I'm just like, uh, okay. Uh, and actually, I was also doing a quick uh, look back. I don't think we've done an LTAS since last May. I think well, that's how long it's been. We, we, we've got LTAS starvation. Mm, that too. So, uh, yeah, sex starvation. Um, so, you know, this is something that came to mind recently. Uh, so I'll start, I'll start at the, I'll start at the now and then work backwards. How about we do that? Um, the pandemic is not going away, kids. Um, later this year, there is a theory that it may turn into an endemic, uh, which is kind of like influenza. Like it's something that's always around and it kind of, you know, has... Uh, peaks and valleys, so to speak. Um, so kind of the question is, are the gays getting their freak on or are they holding back? Or have we found like the middle ground of a new like kind of stage of things where people are doing what they need to do uh, with modifications because mm. so the, 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 you know, the, as Jeff was alluding to, you know, the topic, uh, is sex starvation, which is a legitimate thing for the record. I did not know that for certain when this, when this idea popped in my head, I was like thinking about people being sex starved, um, and how it might make them stir crazy. Mm hmm. Uh, and so, um, there's a couple articles I'm going to kind of reference. We're not going to really get into them, but, uh, so the, it, it is a thing. I'm um, going to have some different context to it, but so yeah, like here we are 2022 yeah. it's February. So, it's the yeah. month of love. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. So it's very interesting because it's something I have, I have thought of, but haven't really, um, because I've been, yes, you know, I have a partner, um, yes, and, you know, we, we live helpful. in the same space, so we're bound to do stuff together because we're together. So pandemic, no pandemic, at least, I, you know, that sounds, I wasn't going to say, at least I got my guy, but that, that sounds kind of negative. <laughs> um, but um, we've, you know, as I've discussed on the show, we're in an open relationship. So we are allowed to, you know, play, have play partners. And um, when the pandemic hit, um, that definitely screeched to a halt for quite a while. Um, um, it was, it was interesting um, to say the least, but I was never, I don't want to say I was ever sex starved. Um, I do know I 
enjoy um it's gonna sound so Blanche Devereaux, but I enjoy the company of 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 many fine, you know, people, men and 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 such. So I don't I missed that. Um um I miss the people I've been with sexually, like I will I will like to call my regulars. Mm. You know, people that I've played with in, you know, in the past that I tend to go back to because we both enjoy each other's company, as it were. And um, during the pandemic, um, a lot of that was gone. Um, mm-hmm. There are people to, to, to this day who I used to play with who I've not seen like online mm-hmm. um, or anywhere, you know, to, to like be like, okay, we'll check in and see how you're doing. I'm thinking a couple of have, you know, not to be negative, have 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 either moved on or moved on, um, mm. uh, which is kind of a very morbid way to think about it, but it's entirely possible. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, uh, I know I've enjoyed, you know, some personal time. I think Ed has talked about that before. Um, uh. I've enjoyed finding new ways to enjoy myself, if that makes sense. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look at Carrie's face. <laughs> We're just going to let the audience's so, imagination so, run with that so, one. Yeah. FYI, um, the last Let's Talk About Sex we did was um, COL 622, which was our horror stories. Um, that was the one with just me and you. Oh, that's Gary. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. And then right after that, um, we did the COL 602 back in May, which was the just for fans, only fans one. Right. I should know because, anyways, I, I should remember that the horror stories was the last one we did. But, anyways, um, I guess the last one with the three of us together was last May. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. I do think that there's been some changes and things. And and part of this, I think, percolated up for me topic wise because we had um, the uh, I don't know what the hell they were calling it. Um, Cruise gate or some mm. shit. So there was, I believe, and I don't have any of my information in front of me. So this is all going to be wrong. Um, so hold your comments. Uh, we had I think it was an Atlantis gay cruise. Um, thousands of MSM uh, individuals on a ship. Uh, My understanding is you had to be fully vaccinated, Mm -hmm. proof of vaccination, including a negative test 72 hours or less prior to boarding. Um, And my, from what I heard or saw quoted online was that they had less than a dozen or roughly a half dozen positive cases out of that entire population. Mm. And so they quarantined them on the ship. Some people, a couple of people, not very many had to be moved because of like rearranging room type stuff. Mm. But from a public health perspective, one would possibly call that a success. Like it was not a rampant, you know, outbreak. Um, You know, and given that we're in the midst of, you know, the Omicron, a very, uh, version right now, you know, uh, variation variant. So it, it's kind of one of these things that I found really interesting. And and so there was this article uh, posted online of this whole opinion thing where someone, um, someone who I've, I just recently was thinking, oh, it'd be really nice to have them on the podcast, um, who is like talking about the whole gays judging thing and how we are not helping ourselves as a community um, being bitchy and judging others because of their behavior. Um, and yet I understand where people are like, now is not the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, There's been some, sorry. So for those that don't know, well, I mentioned it last week. Um, I'm going to North American Bear Weekend in, holy shit, two weeks. Um, so, <laughs> um, and so it's a big weekend. It's a big event. And kind of like the cruise, everyone was required to show proof of vaccination in order to come into the event and are, are have a negative test within 72 hours. It's the either are, but most of it is they're probably recommending 
vaccination and boosting before, you know, being at the event. Um, same thing happened at World Bear Weekend in August 2021 that I also went to. Mm-hmm. So with that one, um, I don't know the full attendance number. I could be wrong, but I think it was in the 200, 300s. Um, there was only one confirmed case that came out after the weekend. And um, Adam, who co-produces that World Bear Weekend, um, had advised that that person also went to uh, one that there was a um, trip to Graceland, like the hotel we were at could also, people could also just go to Graceland. Mm -hmm. Um, And so they went to Graceland, so they went outside of the bubble Mm -hmm. of the event. So it's entirely possible that they got it there. But in either case, um, the, you know, the run is doing what it can to limit um, risk as much as possible. Right. Um, with uh, um, with the variant and everything going on, there I'm sure there are people that are concerned. Um, but um, I am of the ilk of I needed. I as I've mentioned, I'm I'm a social person. I've always been social. So these events, even though they're not, I can do everything I can to limit my you know risk as much. And granted, yes, I've already had COVID, but I, I can do what I can to mitigate my risk and um, and the event can do only so much to mitigate the risk. It's up to you to decide whether you want to go or not. Right. Right. No. And that makes sense. I mean, you know, everyone. Everyone has their own individual power to do what they can um, to mitigate, to stay safe, um, you know, amongst those measures. However. Um, I I do understand how I think there's like kind of two populations happening in the MSM community. There's the population that's like, uh, I can't go no more. Sorry, (laughs) I got needs. Mm -hmm. Ain't gonna happen. Um, You know, and it's kind of a broad generalization, but I understand because the flip side of it possibly is where some, maybe, I don't know for certain, you know, some of this judgment is coming from is from possibly part of the population that is feeling the starvation. You know, there is something to be said for physical touch, um, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and different things that um, come out of these, you know, there's, there's definitely aspects of what you can uh, benefit from, you know, in terms of uh, things. So one of the articles that I'm going to link uh, that we'll have online. This one's from Insider. It's from June 2020 last year. And it's it says, the title is What Happens to Your Body When You Don't Have Sex for a Long Time, According to Experts. And it kind of runs through several things. Um, orgasms, you know, help boost your immunity. They help you sleep better. They reduce anxiety and depression because um, they reduce endorphins. There's a whole bunch of things. It goes on to talk about touch um, and intimacy, how important that is. Mm. Um, and I think all of these are, you know, really valid points. And... Like when this article came out, it was two years ago, not quite a full two years ago, you know, after we, we, I mean, we were in lockdown. The country mm-hmm. was not hardly doing anything that summer. True. Um, and so, you know, here we are now. And I, you know, I think the, the, the availability of vaccination and boosters really changed the landscape. In fact, just this weekend I was reading to my best friend some online statistics that the LGBTQ community out of all the kind of demographic um, sub community groupings has like the highest vaccination rate, like in terms of the entire community, uh, single boosted, fully boosted, mm. um, you know, believes in a vaccine, thinks that it has some benefits to it. And we were discussing, you know, there, there is one faction that's kind of like, um, hello, we lived through the, you know, the, the AIDS epidemic of the eighties into the 90s so maybe we're just kind of prone to wanting to understand medical science a little more than others Mm -hmm. could be you know 96 97 antiretroviral therapies you know the art medicine start coming on the scene and suddenly we start seeing drops in um you know cases because uh, especially people dying um from hiv and so it, it really has changed the landscape and now we have prep um, so I think we might be just more tuned in as a as a community and more um, 
paying attention because we felt we had to demand our humanity be recognized and um, treated with respect. And so we learned, I think, in terms of an activism aspect to make ourselves known in spaces. And now, I mean, look at this. The person who heads HIV for the CDC is an out gay man. Mm -hmm. who I haven't confirmed, but I'm pretty damn sure is a kinky motherfucker. Um, <laughs> seriously, he has tattoos. He has a beard. Dr. Dimitri, hey. Um, <laughs> he's not my type, honestly. But if I was to meet him, I'd be like, you good looking motherfucker. Um, you know, he's from New York and he's, you know, pretty outspoken. Um, the fact that he got is in this position is, you know, really, really good for our community. But look at where we are. You know, we're at 40 years into HIV AIDS. So I think we we had to like demand to be in spaces to be recognized. And then we put we inserted ourselves. So it's a, a lot of that's changed the landscape. Consequently, my point is the MSM community specifically, I think, is pretty aware compared to others about medicine and like those uh... things. So we might be one of the first ones, you know, to be going and getting the um, you know, stuff uh, for vaccination, and then ergo, you know, people got needs, mm -hmm. um, and they want to, you know, do stuff. Yeah, like I am. Uh, I keep saying that. Like I am of the ilk that I want. Like I am again. I I need. I wanted interactions with people of the social slash sexual side for quite a while. And mm -hmm. going to like World Bear was, I think, the first time in over since like the pandemic had started that I had actually actively gone out to um, um, uh, be with a lot of other people. Um, was I was I worried? Absolutely. Um, but I did like I said before. I did what I could to try to limit the risk as much as possible. Right. Um, I was like, like, I wasn't screening people at the door or none of that shit, but like I was, you know, <laughs> like. <laughs> Sorry, I just had this image of someone standing with like the antigen, like the rapid antigens in their hand. <laughs> and they're like, T tilt your head back and they like run, yeah, run yeah. the nasal swab <laughs> and then they pop it in the little you know rabbit <laughs> antigen and they'd be like just hang out just, yeah, just 15 just, minutes just, yeah, just, just wait sit, 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 sit outside there's there's a chair there's <laughs> you can sit right there just just you know chill there's a little ice bucket with a bottle uh -huh. of water in it if you'd like mm -hmm. yeah um, <laughs> you know it's so like have, have, have a seat <laughs> give me 15 minutes we'll see what the test says yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Not not doing any of that, no. But right, right. um you know, uh during World Bear, <laughs> in fact, the city of Memphis where it was held that Friday went into a mask mandate. Like indoors, outdoors, Ooh. um, masks need to be worn um at all, like at all times. Now was it followed like to the greatest extent for every at that every did every person follow it? Hell to the no. Um, probably by like Saturday, um, there were there were people wearing masks, but you know it was fewer and far between. Mm -hmm. And um, but again, we kind of had you know we had this bubble set up. Right, right, right. And um, I hate like describing it that way, but that's kind of what it was. You know, everyone that was at the event was either vaccinated or negative before they came to the event. Right. So the hope was that no one there would have had COVID because they've either been vaccinated or they've had a negative test. And by the end of the weekend, come Saturday, because no one, I mean, we weren't really doing anything outside of the hotel. Um, I mean, people could go get food and whatever, and that's kind of the you know one other factors that could have been there could have been an effect. But for the most part, everything was happening at the hotel, so you didn't really need to leave. So you could stay there the entire weekend, and come Sunday, you went home mm -hmm. Sunday or Monday, depending on who you were, 
And then you could go home. And what I did when I got home, I, I um, self-quarantined myself in the house. Um, I slept in our guest room for a few days mm. um, just to make sure that I didn't have any, if anything symptomatic, symptom-wise came up, I can go get a test and then find out. But right. um, nothing happened and everything was good. And like I said, according to Adam, there was only one t- no positive test. So it works. Like you said, like that was the thing. Like it works. The vaccines work. Um, so I, I understand being sex starved. I, I understand wanting to keep it safe or play it safe. But I also feel um, that if you're taking care of yourself and you take the appropriate, you know, mitigate um, mitigations or you know factors, mm-hmm. then you can potentially play safely with someone um, now um, with little ish risk. Right. I I mean, I agree with you. I I think that now more than ever, there's a possibility there's there's quite the potential to be safe um, to do things with other people. The the thing is, like, I'm thinking about how, like, the concept of sex starvation has changed drastically pre from pre pandemic to where we are now. In 2019, had we discussed this topic, we would have been talking about like people in relationships, Mm -hmm. um, Either they are, you know, solo themselves or they are in a relationship, married, cohabitating, whatever, and they feel sex starved, like they're not getting, you know, enough intimacy in their life, um, enough, you know, mm-hmm. experience, enough orgasm, whatever that may be. Um, and and it's different. And the reason I say it's different now is because at that time, we would have been talking about factors that are very different in why a person would have been sex starved. Mm-hmm. Now we are, you know, two years, quote unquote, mm-hmm. you know, into the into the pandemic now, and um, I think, understandably, some people are very cautious and mm-hmm. holding back and not wanting to necessarily do things, or you know, rightfully concerned about if they, you know, um, you know, hook up with somebody, uh, you know, what that is going to be. Mm-hmm. You know, and I get it, you know, we, you know, we've always kind of made jokes um, like I was making reference, you know, so parched, um, <laughs> you know, people be thirsty, um, you know, and, and I think a part of that that also brought this to mind is, you know, I see folks on Twitter and I think in the past two years, I'm seeing quite the peak right now of people being like, I got to get it. I need it now. My bo- <laughs> my body, like, you know, mm-hmm. My body either needs to inject other people or needs to be injected. Like or both. Yeah, right. Or all. Right, right. Um, and, you know, and, and there was a time last year. I th- uh, Okay, it wasn't either of you. Sorry. I was about to say one of you, and I was like, nope, different person. Um, <laughs> said something to me about how someone that we both mutually followed on Twitter was um, being bold and going out and hooking up with people and they were videotaping it and posting it on Twitter. And they wanted to know my thoughts about that because there was, I think this might've been um, during one of the, the peaks of, mm-hmm. you know, spread in cases and, and they're they contextually, they were kind of like, do you think this is an acceptable behavior or is this like really risky? And I was like, eh. you know, it's like, it was kind of dicey because there's a part of me that's like, I think it's fucking hot watching them, you know, (laughs) (laughs) but on the other side of it, you know, the public health, you know, person in me is like, well, mm, yeah, like they probably really shouldn't be doing that or, you know, um, and it's, it is, it's very difficult, you know, because there's so much that isn't known about the circumstances, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, how many times are you watching somebody bareback and it's like, you know, and there is a part of me that's kind of like, have y'all had your had your testing? <laughs> got, got shots, all that kind of stuff. Prep? Right. Are you on prep? Like, are you doing all these things? You're getting tested regularly, like, you know. Um, but I'm not really thinking of that usually right in the moment when I'm watching it. Cause most likely if I'm watching it, my mind is elsewhere. It is mm-hmm. not, you know, in, in your my mind's in the lower head. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just I I agree with thing? you. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Yes, Zephyr, injecting them. <laughs> I'm not saying that's a good a good come on line. I don't know if that works, you know, as a as a pickup. I'm just saying, uh, you know, I have been been known to have a taste of a many a man in, in my in my half my age. So, you know. <laughs> Used to call myself a, you know, central depository of you know, donations. Anyways, sorry, move on. <laughs> Anyways, you don't know me. You don't know my story. It, excuse lot. me. I like your cake. Can I drink from the tap? <laughs> uh, I know some of what you've told us several <laughs> years. Say, as soon as I said that, I was like, how many years have I been on here like telling stories? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, again, uh, yeah, I mean... I I mean just well oh god darn it I hate comparing this to like the other pandemic the ep epidemic you know but that was kind of what was happening you know 80s 90s what have you when um the AIDS epidemic was coming was around as far as we know like some of us are uh, I don't want to say too young, young enough or not old enough to like know it fully. Like I don't think I know it fully because I was a when I was during its height, I was still a teenager. Um, right. I mean, like, you know, yeah. There, there's a limited amount of that resource of the elders in our community mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To, that are alive today to tell the yeah. stories of what things were like. Yeah. However, you know, it is it is pretty mixed mm -hmm. to see what it was like to live at that time when like overwhelmingly a society just didn't seem to care like yeah turn turned a blind eye and was kind of like and you know and what's super shitty about it that I, I hope the world has moved away from is that because we were the community of um initial like uh negative effect i don't know how so i want to phrase that mm -hmm. you know like like because you know gays were the ones that you know were initially um coming down with cases that you know, and we weren't exactly, um, you know, everybody's best friend and mm -hmm. and welcomed in all the spaces or whatever, you know, and it is not that we are today, but there's been a lot of, you know, um, yeah. growth that's been made in those areas. Yeah, it was it was a whole different landscape. And so, you know, it was like, you know, oh, the gay the gays have cancer and they're dying. Oh, oh OK. And that was the kind of the end I of mean, it. Yeah. You know, and so now I feel like if anything, hopefully, for the most part, if there was a be a, a sub, you know, a subgroup of our population that was having something happen, we would pay attention to that, mm -hmm. you know, and, and not be so um, almost like despicably inhuman about it. But I hear you, you know, it's like we, we, we have a some kind of a parallel, but it's not the same thing. Yeah. And this is also this is one of the things I've tried explaining to some folks like <sighs> COVID is a whole different landscape because everybody quickly could be affected mm -hmm. and you didn't really have much choice in the matter. Like, I think Fair. there was a lot of judgment about, and still to this day uh, in some areas of our country and the world about HIV, because you have to partake in certain activities to contract. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For COVID is like, baby, you just need to breathe. Like you just need to live. Uh huh. You know, yeah. that's kind of, that's kind of, um, the the reality of it. Um, so yeah. yeah, I mean, I, and I I see you know what they're saying in the live chat. You know, it's it's difficult when you want to take you know precautions, and yet maybe in your area, people aren't you know that hip to it. Yeah. Um, you know, like I just got back from being out of town, and wow, like few and far between the amount of people that are still masking at this stage. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is, and it, it's kind of difficult because, you know, numbers are starting to come down and, you know, mm -hmm. it, there's kind of a philosophy if you've gotten it, you've gotten it. If you haven't gotten it, you're going to get it. Um, yeah. And whether or not you're vaccinated is another issue, you know, and we're still, I think, as a nation hovering around 60 some percent. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's definitively complex, yeah. um, you know, in, in what that is. Um, That's been my kind of, I get like, I'm, I'm. I was trying to read Rangers. Um, mm -hmm. so there's a lot. Thank you, Rangers. But um, I get the frustration and, you know, this whole, se like, kind of adding to the sexual starvation of it all to kind of bring it back to topic. Um, in a lot of ways, there's going to get a, there's, you're going to get a moment where you're just going to be like, I can't, 
stand it anymore. Like, right, I need and to I, do something. Like, right, <laughs> and I will say that that's probably the most dangerous time mm-hmm. when your emotional drive overrides like concepts of of logic. And by that I mean, because I'm, I mean, I'm a candidate of that. When I was really um, kind of being whorish in my twenties, um, I was just sucking dick. I, I sucked any dick. Like it didn't matter where the dick was from, whose it was. Like I was just, you know, like there was no real thought process mm-hmm. behind because I was, I had such an emotional um, decline. I, I had such low self getting worth and value from the ability to give other people orgasms. And so because of that, like, and having that lesson in my past, I can see where there are times in my life where I'm kind of like, okay, like, brand it in, like, it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? Like, you don't need to exhibit these particular behaviors to build yourself up or have value or pride yeah. or, or you know, find yourself in in a community. But I get you, you know, I think, Damon, what you're trying to say is there comes a point where you're just kind of like, I, I got to. I got to. I got to do something. And- Period. Yeah, and I and I don't want to be that person where like I don't want to it be like you said it could potentially it could potentially be self destructive, but it can you know it's also you you like you said you get the emotions get to it and you you need to do something or someone as it were and um, without like you know not I guess the, like you said without any real rational thought behind it you just need to do it and i were i wonder how that's been especially for someone who is like become sex starved i wonder what that is if there's like a break is that a break um a break like a bad break or is that like something that will maybe help i don't know um right and and i think there's also another big factor like you know that they're discussing in the chat right now is like this disassociative perspective that happens um that there are there are populations of our you know our broader humanity that are more vulnerable and they are still vulnerable to this day they are immunocompromised um you know they have medical conditions and so they really should not have exposure if at all possible but if that's not directly affecting or touching your life, it's probably not on your radar. Mm-hmm. And so you're not thinking about that. You know, you're like, I, I gotta do this, do that, whatever that may be. Um, I mean, I remember back during the pandemic, we did have a talk at one point. I don't remember which episode it was, where we kind of talked about sex bubbles, if I remember. Mm-hmm. Um, so we kind of talked about this idea of like, you know, being selective of who you're with. Um, whether it's people in your home or if it's specific kind of like friends with benefits or whatever that is. Um, And I think even that notion's kind of gone by the wayside because now, you know, there really is this heavy handed pursuit to get back to quote unquote normal, which I've been trying to explain to people is not going to happen. So Um, (laughs) that was COL 569. Let's talk about sex bubbles slash pods. What a good number. Um, <laughs> yeah, because uh, you know, I, I really feel that people are you know hot pursuit to try to obtain normalcy. Normalcy being what we knew was the average experience or the common experience of our lives before the pandemic came around. And I really don't know if that's going to happen. It, it's is it possible? Yes, but I still think we're a, we're a bit of a ways out. It's a, a, at least a year, if not longer. And I say that because we don't know what's going to happen. You know, like it was just recently discussed um, on a advisory committee board that I'm with about whether or not to have a public event, and they were like, "So, do we want to move ahead with this plan or not? Uh, what if there's another variant, um, another wave?" And so classically, they turn on the call and they're like, Gary, as the public health, you know, professional, (laughs) what is your opinion? And I was like, "Uh." Um, I groan because I'm like, uh, you know, it's like, I can't predict, bitch. Like, you know, I. Yeah, that's not true. No, I am. I am. I am the HIV AIDS like person. I am not the 
full on public health figure for this county. I don't look at all the graphs and p- maps and <laughs> and right, but do even the predictions so, and shit. No, I, I can't. Like I, you know, honey, Miss Cleo, I am not. <laughs> mm, um, also that. <laughs> you know, like I cannot predict the future. If I could. I'd, I'd I'd have some bank. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be. Yeah, I wouldn't be. I might not be here. You know those lotto numbers of the yeah. something billion dollar lottery right now? I would know I, those, and I wouldn't be I talking might, to you right now. I would. I, I would probably be in investments. Mm-hmm. Um, like my bank account would be a lot healthier than it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, so I can't really speak to that, but I get why they were kind of like turning to me, so to speak, as the professional voice would be like, "What do you think?" And what I told him was. Let's let's talk reality. You cannot prepare for everything. Mm-hmm. And you also need to keep in mind fatigue. Mm. The world is growing weary and tired. The U.S. is probably leading that um, mm-hmm. because we came into the pandemic with a highfalutin sense of self about personal freedom. Mm-hmm. And how, how has that done wonders for us as a country in two what years? Freedom. We also had one of the worst presidents in the United States. The history. I wouldn't say one of. I would just say <laughs> <laughs> the, the landscape. You know, really, ha- you know, challenged us. Some, you know, some areas of the world have been much better in terms of mm-hmm. mitigation, and testing, and caseloads and spread and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, also, I just try to keep things in focus for folks. A country is equivalent to a state over here. Mm-hmm. Very different. We are the United States. There are 50 of them. It's kind of like 50 countries, kind of like, you know. Uh, yeah, plus territories. Yeah, the UN. Right, right, right. Um, kind of like the European Union. Like, it is a collective of things. Um, so it, it is pretty challenging um, to do that, you know, just uh, to, to to move forward in certain things as a group, but also, you know, the comparative. Yeah. So that being said. Um, yeah, it's a it's a whole different landscape right now. I think I think that people who who know what their needs are and were probably pretty active before are the are the front of this movement that's happening right now, where people mm. are, like, I'm gonna go do things, or do people, or have people do me, wh- whichever applies. All of the all above. of them. <laughs> and and I would say that it would be fine to if you're essentially keeping it into regulars bubbles sort of mm-hmm, mm-hmm. things that it it is a precaution yeah for the matter but it's like outside of your fun what else are they doing mm-hmm. you know it and ends just, up being just... the same type of thing the only difference between as with hiv aids except uh with hiv aids touch proximity didn't matter and Mm. and now proximity does matter and Mm -hmm. and you don't even have to be like naked in order to do it Mm -hmm. or or have a specific organ in a specific place yeah and certain fluids being released Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's been like i agree like jeff i think it's you may have to start taking if you if you want to start engaging and lose that sex starvation or satiate that starvation as it were then um you might have to start asking those questions that you you know may not be happy to have the answers with you know are you vaccinated um have you had a test covid test you know um when was your, when was your last COVID test or whatever you know kind of thing? Um, because we're going I think that's the you know that's the only way to keep yourself safe if you wish to stay negative of COVID. One mm-hmm. of the main ways, you know. Yes, they could lie. Yes, they could. You know, you could you know you could ask them to show a COVID card. They can give you a fake one. Whatever. We all know that could be a thing. But I don't think that's going to be a problem. <laughs> I think like most people, everyone is feeling a certain kind of way. We wouldn't be having this conversation if <laughs> people weren't feeling a certain kind of way. Mm. And it might be time to change the script 
and, you know, make this part of the conversation. You know, we always talk about in sex education about like asking questions about, you know, your your SDIs and, and when you're being tested and making sure that you're tested regularly. We should probably be doing the same for something like this during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, if you want to talk about flipping the script, let's talk about consent. Mm. COVID now can be part of that consent conversation. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people are ready for that, though. Yeah. Because I think we're still struggling about even having a conversation about consent. Like, what are what is acceptable to you or to the individuals that you're, you know, having um, activities with? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like, like that's a whole, like, new portion of the landscape. But I, I think what you're saying, Damon, is, like, this, this is just another layer, mm -hmm. you know, in having that conversation about what you want to do, with whom, you know, what stage are they at? Yeah. And, and yeah. what have they had for exposures um, and those yeah. things? And yeah, I mean, I hear, you know, Rangers, you know, is talking about how, you know, we get a vaccine and then we have two different waves of, of you know, variants that come out. So I hate to say it, but like this is par for the course. Um, you know, variants are natural in terms of, of viruses. Mm -hmm. um, this is just something, you know, this this is remember back when we first started talking about COVID, like this is a one in a, in a century kind of thing. You know, it hasn't been since this will contend with a, a public health matter of the mm -hmm. sort. So, yeah, generations have gone by where we haven't really had to think about, you know, the science and, and how it works and, and what happens. Um, the hope is that we will see that the virus becomes less um, virulent uh less um mm -hmm. deadly so to speak uh, yeah. my friend and i we were just discussing it this weekend it's quite possible that we're going to see more variants that are going to be highly spreadable um but less detrimental mm -hmm. unless you happen to be unvaccinated like yeah. that is the one key thing statistically that keeps coming out that is kind of blowing my mind like the latest reference was that if you are unvaccinated you are 97 times more likely to end up hospitalized and or deceased yeah like that's frightening to me yeah like as a as a science perspective like i don't i don't like there's a part of me that's like if it your choice if you don't want to but i don't mm -hmm. know yeah why why that I, seems acceptable to you as far as a gamble yeah yeah of your personal you know yeah life. agreed like that's my biggest that's always been my thing like i don't understand it but whatever you do you like but do do you old way like down the street <laughs> out of my house i would prefer you if you weren't in my neighborhood so i don't even have to see you in the street but like <laughs> but again like i can't i have been i actually had i was gonna have a mini rant and i probably will eventually post it on facebook but one of the things that i was realizing is like you know i got COVID after two years of um you know, doing what I can, wearing masks, getting vaccinated, doing all the stuff that I felt that I need, could do to limit my risk, I got it, you know? Right. And fortunately for me, it was pretty mild. You know, it was, right. it was, it was honestly uh, like a really bad cold, you know, flu kind of feeling with no fever. Right. And and the blessing of that, um, I'm going to say without any proof, uh, take it as you will, is I think the vaccination was the key factor in mm -hmm. how you had that experience. Yeah. Vaccine and boosted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. I, I get it. You know, people, some people might be like, well, it's not going to prevent you from getting it. Bitch, it's not a cure. Like, you yeah, know, the vaccine is not a cure. It's it's not a you know it's not going to create a shield around you that makes it impenetrable that you're not going to, mm -hmm. um, you know, end up acquiring it. You know, when you have an exposure, the whole thing is to like reduce the potential of the harmful effects. Mm -hmm. But I, I do hear like you know Rangers talking about you know long term COVID is a big concern about the future. And yeah, in another 10, 15, 20 years, we could see a whole portion of our population that have new circumstances medically because of long COVID that we just cannot predict. And that's the other part that surprises me that people aren't also measuring that, mm -hmm. um, you know, in their lives. 
Uh, So, you know, and and I get it. So in terms of, you know, the 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 topic today, (laughs) it's a key factor because you're trying to figure out, you know, like, how do I how do I meet my needs? Um, You know, what is it that I do and with whom, where and when, you know, and and go through that. Yeah. And and I think it, you know, everyone kind of finds it in their own time and their own balance. I don't think that there's an easy answer to that. Um, yeah. I will say this. I think still, even now for the first half of this year, if not maybe all of 2022, um, the known experiences you've had, those persons are probably the best candidates for a, a repeat not so much a repeat, but a return, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, you know, to make a new experience, yeah. uh, a better one, hopefully, mm-hmm. uh, you know, so that you can feel comfortable, yeah. um, you know, because I mean, this is the reality. Sex is an ego boost. I don't know how else to say it to people. Like the fact that somebody has sex with you typically boosts your ego in some fashion. Unless it's against your consent, let's be fair, okay? Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. But otherwise, you know, you, you know, get a little lift in your step. You, you know, feel hot to trot. Like, you know, I still got it. Um, you know, what's that? Stella got her groove back. Um, you know, there, there's different things, I think, that, you know, can really be beneficial in terms of that. Um, you know, and... It is. It's pretty difficult. There's another article that I want to mention briefly. It's from it's a bit older. It's from 2014, but it talks about um, sex starvation. But what I find interesting is they talk about um, what they someone termed as sexual anorexia. Um, And the reason that they talk about this is that um, they saw it as a disorder um, and that there were some things that led to it. Uh, And I think it's important purely in the context of if it wasn't for COVID, this is a little bit more of what I think we might be discussing in mm. terms of like people who are sex starved. They may have had experiences that give them reason to not have sex. Um, you know, it could be, you know, a previous experiences um, that make them fear it, uh, that don't enjoy it. Um, so therefore they avoid it. And, you know, that's a whole other thing that you would want to work through, uh, I would think, with a therapist. Um, the point of today is more about, like, we just, we're in a different land. We're in a whole different world of whether or not you have availability, whether or not you have options, and are those options, you know, those persons, those activities safe? Um, I'm aware of a group that has uh, started planning um, a group activity, I guess I'll call it. Um, and they're going through certain measures and they're like, there's a date, there's a time, um, you have to commit to this, uh, kind of like a reservation, there's proof of vaccination, um, you know, and I think that's very reasonable, you know, um, it, it's, it's a little different than how it's been done in the past, but it makes sense to me, you know, so I think that, um, you know, we we find ourselves trying to um, the balance those things as we we want to go about them, you know, in our in our lives in that case. Um, and I'm going to admit it like I was already not really having sex prior to the pandemic. <laughs> the pandemic did not help. <clears throat> so, you know. That's that that I think is a is part of also probably why this came to mind was like, you know, people are just trying to. I don't know, you know, be be comfortable in who they are in this modern day, wherever they may be, Um, Mm -hmm. you know. Sorry, I'm I'm now amused by the fact that apparently we're getting a lot of spam in our chat. Yay. (laughs) Is this, is this what it's like to be popular, Ken? Um, <laughs> but I know it's been like I don't. I mean, well, I guess I'll I'll I'll, I'll ask you, Jeff, um, in particular. 
Because I think, I mean, you and you and Gary are two single guys. So, like. All the single guys. All the single guys. All the single guys. <laughs> all the single guys. <laughs> hands up. <laughs> exactly. But, like, how? I mean, how, I mean, how are you feeling? Are you. Like, well, I, I'm probably the worst to ask this question of. I had a feeling, but because I am <laughs> super introverted, he he's talked about it before. I have, Stop it, Gary. That was not Shay. That was totally that was, no, 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 no. Damon has the appropriate fan. <laughs> give yeah, it. But, give me the F. There we right, go. Right, right, right. But I'm glad we're having this discussion because you just kind of dropped it, and I was like. <laughs> Dang. Dang. No, no, no. I'm I'm got I'm fine. I'm fine. It is definite it's definitely tea. This is nice Jeff, tea, by Jeff the way. Has, so. Jeff has said on many an occasion <laughs> many of the occasions. He, he is he is he is introverted and while he enjoys I, I really need to go is, to a therapist to get absolutely uh, uh or or somebody, a psychologist or something to get diagnosed so I oh, have a, yeah. like an actual verified scientific term. But I, I'm pretty sure I suffer from social anxiety and just being around people. Like this pandemic has been great for me. I have been very happy because I don't have to go see people if I don't want to at all. It's great. Although I'm a trainer, so I'm talking to people all the time, which is so weird for me. Um, in, in any case, uh, but as for sexual starvation, I do not feel sex starved at all. Like, or in the slightest, I haven't had sex in years. I don't think, I don't even remember the last time I actually had sex with another person see, in, in one see, way, shape see or form. What happens, people? Jeff now has sex amnesia. That's what's happened. <laughs> starvation <laughs> leads to amnesia. You can't remember the last time. I don't even know. I, 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 I'm apparently, apparently good with my uh, 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 partner, my right hand. <laughs> long time commitment. Yeah, sure. long time commitment. I hear uh, that. <laughs> long time commitment. Excuse me a moment. <laughs> this is my long time companion. If oh, anybody gets that oh, reference. Oh, 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 oh. Um, Shit. Hilarious. <laughs> So, so for me, because of just, I don't know, psychologically speaking, uh, again, I'm not going to, I'm not a doctor. I haven't diagnosed anything. I haven't gotten a diagnosis. I mean, yeah. just, just like, I keep telling myself, I probably should at least, you know, see a therapist at least a little bit, you know, that maybe not like overly regular sessions, at least see it one session, get some things to determine if I even think it's probably going to be beneficial for more or something i don't know psychologist even just for diagnosis purposes or something in any case uh because of my current state and because well the nice thing about modern day is uh, is well there's a lot of stuff online right right mm -hmm. sure. so me uh, and my uh companion um Whenever the need arises, I will not say pun intended on that. Uh, pun un, not pun not intended on that. Nor will I say it was intended. It just kind of happened, but that's fine. Um, Shit. that I can take care of business and I'm good. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Well, but you have a, you bring up a really good point, though, Jeff, right? Like, we live in an age now where we have options for outlet. Mm -hmm. If we go back 30 years and we went through this experience, well, I'm telling you what, there would be a lot of people out there getting a freaky deek out in the world. Because mm -hmm. the, the, the ability to have, have – to have peen in the palm of your hand – <laughs> to to watch the sexes happening <laughs> like inches from your eyes is 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 completely possible and at very little cost financially mm. um yep look and, rangers and, and, it so, could be the left hand depending on on how you are some people are ambidextrous i'm just saying right right 
<laughs> so yeah, I, I think that's, that's left a, handed. <laughs> I think that's you know a really good valid point. You know that we we live in a very different age now. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. um, of what the the possibilities are. But yeah. I, I I wouldn't. Uh, I understand where where other people are are where they're sex starved because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know for some people their hand can't do enough for what they're mean they don't necessarily meet their needs they may be able to you know it's it's the good soda on occasion but you want to have that a good cocktail which comes at special mm -hmm. occasions you know and yeah. sometimes you just need that good cocktail speaking of which that i should probably open that bottle of rum in tail um anyways <laughs> yeah i mean i i think um that is an option, but you're right, Jeff. Like it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily meet all the needs. I'm interested inappropriately uh, <laughs> for like in about another five years, if I'm going to see some studies about if anybody has tracked the amount of sexual toys in retail, if there's been a huge spike during the pandemic, um, because people realize like, mm. you know, I, I need to be able to do things. So mm. You know, um, I have. I I need it. I need it to light up. I need it to gyrate. I need it to have like <laughs> vibrate patterns, something. right? I need it to have a suction base. I need it to Bluetooth. I need it to you know, like Wi-Fi, whatever. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, now I all it, I see I are these ads to my Bluetooth, like well, so I right, can, like <laughs> I sell these like masturbators, right? Like all these ads mm -hmm. that are out there now that like oh, they they gyrate, right? Right, that thing, that <laughs> handles. Like, motherfucker is like, you know, like, I'm just like, geez, like, there are okay. things like I have seen. So, um, <laughs> I have seen, I have ex experienced, like, there, there are a lot of stuff. Like, I am, I, I agree with you. I want to know what's happening with the sex toy industry, like, between like 2018, 19, and like 2024, 25. Something along those lines. I really want to get an idea of how that's going. Look at you. So I did a what do you little, share, it, Jeff? I did a, uh, a little Google search for sex toys or, or uh, sex sex toys sales. What, what did I Google search? I don't remember what I Google searched. Let me let me just mm -hmm. put this in chat so I can link it to you guys. Uh, but there's this report, and I'll put in the uh, general chat so anybody else can look at it. I did. This was just the first one, and it looked uh, kind of appropriate. This is right from January twenty twenty one, so uh, right about a year after the pandemic started. About the global toy market size was valued at the at thirty three point six four billion in twenty twenty, and it was expected to to compound. Here's the thing: is when I look at their forecasting chart. There's a spike in 2020, but then sales look like it's just gradually going up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With, mm. with, with their forecast up to about 2028. Um, but that could just be, hopefully, more people in the world. Yeah, so uh, I kind of call into question. Uh, I think it's too soon mm -hmm. for accuracy because I agree with you. I think the 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 gradual curve thing is kind of Deceiving. eyebrow raising. And th this was also from twenty twenty one, so I don't know if there's any update. I, right. I, I didn't see anything for updates for like twenty twenty from twenty twenty two. Yeah, but we're only like a month. And a half into 2022, month and a few days actually. Mm -hmm. But it is again. I agree. Like I think it, it'll be interesting to see how that, what that data will actually show. Um, because I know. I mean, I, 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 like I said, I have a partner, but I've also enjoyed some of my own personal pleasure, and part of that personal pleasure has been finding, um, rather interesting, like toys vibrator kind of things to use um uh actually um got one recently that i found through someone on twitter 
Um, I've only tried it once. I need to give it more testing, if that makes sense. <laughs> it's gonna sound really bad um, to kind of see if I like it because it's a it's to 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 be blunt, it's a little bulky for me. Um, I, if I'm gonna be using something to kind of enhance pleasures down there, I kind of need it to fit in my hand. But I have I don't have big hands, so. Mm-hmm. Um, I need, I need, I just need something a little bit, I think I need something smaller and, um, but doing what it's doing. Cause I like what it's doing, but, um, I need more, I need like something smaller. Look, you um, don't need the max. You just need the regular version. Just, yeah, just like I say with one. phones, because phones are getting too big. I'm not looking for a hand. Uh, looking for a port for a tablet. I'm looking for a phone. But that's another <laughs> matter altogether. Mm. Oh. Yeah, I mean, and, and I hear where you know Ranger is talking about like you know, sex is one thing, um, touch is another. Mm. Cuddling, you know, mm. um, is you know, is it, in my in some ways for me is kind of equivalent to hugging. You know, it's it's touch of another person, um, and it does certain things to you physically, psychologically. Um, you know, and so that, you know, are also big items that, you know, folks want to take into account and think about, you know, how that impacts their, their lives. Because, um, you know, while some of the, some of these companies that are, you know, involved in the sex toys market, I find it interesting. I was a little distracted. I was like, oh, I recognize two names of two very large, uh, condom manufacturers being also apparently in the sex toy market. (laughs) Imagine that. Um, you know, that, uh, you know, that, that is an area as well that we're probably going to see growth. Um, no pun intended, uh, (laughs) you know, for folks to, um, have personal satisfaction, um, you know, when it comes Mm. to, to those things. So, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I wasn't expecting this topic to, you know, be revolutionary to solve the world's ills or, you know, come up with anything, um, you know, that's going to win us an award. I just thought it was, you know, important to recognize that I think this is still a thing that's going on, but we're, we're definitely in a different place than we were a year and a half ago, let's say. Um, cause I definitely think that there's people now having experiences selectively choosing things, um, my hope is, is that people are just educated, uh, in their selections of their choices that they're making now compared to what they were before and how that could yeah. potentially impact people, mm-hmm. um, in the community, you know, those that are, um, more, uh, I guess I want to say medically vulnerable, um, given their circumstances. Agreed. So, yeah, um, and this obviously is an interest of, you know, of people. Hell, uh, we got spam bots in the live chat today. So <laughs> some algorithm, something somewhere was paying attention to what we were talking about. Or if uh, you have thoughts, let us know. Um, you know, we'd be curious to to see what you think. And maybe we'll revisit and have a continuation of this discussion. Yeah. And there's plenty of ways you can do that. I'm assuming you're trying to to pass off to Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could pop over to our website, cubsoutloud.com, and leave a comment on the blog. You could email it at cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Heck, you could call us at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Yeah, you could do it also on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can even chat with us by going to tinyworld.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, and if you want to watch us live and comment live, you can find out when we're planning on recording this by going to our ca- Google Calendar at tinyworld.com slash calendar dash col. Otherwise, you can also get uh, uh, accoutrement, such as a Cubs Out Loud shirt. And we got our version 2 shirt that Damon is wearing. Hard to see because it's all in white and everything but that's okay there we go much a little a little bit better there you can get hats 
a whole bunch of things. Some of our designs there are also uh, are also designed by Smashy. Uh, you can get some of his designs over at TeePublic at tpublic.com slash user smash. Oh, wait, uh, wait, stop. Oh, time out. Happy birthday, Smashy. Yay! Happy birthday, Smashy. As we're recording this today, Smashy's birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Bye. Smashy. So celebrate his birthday by buying a shirt from him by going to tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. Uh, if you would like to, you can also become a patron of us at Patreon at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, or if you want to send us, just send us some cash. You can do that over at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can uh, find us on basically all the podcasting directories, such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Amazon Audible, and uh, Spotify. You can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Step, Box Puppy, Box Cub, Box something or other, or Windgem, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M, on Twitch where I just finished the main scenario of Endwalker today, just a couple hours ago. We got to see Emigos fight the final boss. I'm not going to say who of uh, Endwalker and Mm. then uh, see the little denouement of the main story quest and gave some slight speculation on what might be coming up in future patches of Final Fantasy 14. Mm. So and there's also Bears and Dragons on Thursdays. Damon. Bears and Dragons. Um, it went to get ooh, ugh, uh-huh, words. <laughs> <laughs> Tired. It is late. Um if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me on Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, thank you, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now.